Okay, good morning to you guys. Morning to you guys at home. Good morning to you guys here. And let's take a look at a couple of ideas here today. First of all, just to remind you guys, or not really to remind you, you do have this alternate notation. This is called a what? Indefinite integral. Now, you say, what do you guys notice about this? You should notice something very interesting, right? Right? You say, you don't know. What do you guys notice about this? I use a highlighter. I use this in red. There's no what? There's no limits. Okay, there's no limits. So to express to you guys what this means or how to answer this question, it's very simple. It's still the anti-derivative. Anti <coughs> Sorry. It's the anti-derivative of little f plus c. Okay. You don't have to evaluate the limits here. So, very simply, what's the, what's the antiderivative of x cubed? Do you guys remember? Just use the what? Power rule. One-fourth, x to the fourth, plus c. So, <clears throat> no limit evaluation, and you're done. Okay, not too bad. You know, these aren't terribly difficult. You said, what if they gave me three square root of x dx? And again, there's no limits here. It's an indefinite integral. So you still have the what? Properties. You can pull out your constant. Okay, you guys okay with that? Pull out the constant. And I guess we have to, yeah, we have this here. Now we can integrate. Meaning, you got that constant times the integral of x to the 1 half dx. Did we give you guys these properties? I thought we did. Do you guys know what I'm saying? properties of integrals. So now we just integrate this and you have that family. Isn't that X to the three halves divided by what? Three halves plus C, which is now three times two thirds X to the three halves plus C. Maybe we got to talk about this detail. Okay, we do got to talk about it. You got to distribute here. So you end up with, really, 3 times 2 thirds, x to the 3 halves, 3 times c. So when you simplify here, you get 2 x to the 3 halves plus, you might say, what happens over here? Do you guys know? Do you guys know what happens there? That's just another constant. So you might just say plus what? D. Okay, you might call that D. But if you look in back of the book, you know what you see? You see 2x square root of x plus c. So does anybody know why you see that? Why do you think that is? Right, what do they do here? They did that trick I showed you guys, right? X to the three halves is really X times X to the one half. So remember this. This is X to the one and one half. X to the one, X to the one half, X squared of X. And then you say, what did they do over here? Well, 
they just they instead of writing three C, they say, well, that's a constant because a constant times a constant is just another constant. So you can write it as D. I used to do that when I was a student. Okay, I used to say, oh, okay, I'm going to write that as D, but um, at the end of the day. You're looking back at the book. They call it constant again. So all they're saying is, hey, guess what? This is a constant. This is a constant. And it's although it's a different C, the point is it's just of the form of a constant. It's a family of solutions. We call this indefinite what? Integrals. So on my website, for example, you go to the website. Um, I thought I had it. Yeah, it's a kind of out of order here. Okay. I have a whole worksheet on indefinite integrals here. Okay, so we're going to work with some of these examples here. Just so you guys can get the, the, the feel of indefinite integrals. It's just get the antiderivative. You know, so like this next example again, they can say four square root of x dx. And let me let me do that here. Okay. So you guys remember the property you, you use here? Okay, if you guys recall, you have a constant times a function. What do you guys can do? You pull out the constant and you integrate the function. That's what we're doing. So the constant in this case is what? Four, is that right? So this becomes four times the integral of what? One over the square root of x dx. You pulled out your constant like you did in the last problem, right? Okay. Now what do you guys do? Now all you do is integrate here. So I need my constant for, I need to write this as x to the minus one half. Is that right? And so we're integrating this. So what do you think? What happens now here, right? Isn't this going to be now what? We get now what? Four. This will stick with blue. Four. What's the power rule say? What happens when I add one to the negative one half? What do you guys get? Okay, so notice this. This is that I integrated here. This is that here. This is one half. You still have the constant of what? Four. Is that true? All right, you guys okay with that? Okay, and so let's put this all together. This is 4 times 2 square root of x plus c, but you're going to distribute, and that gives you now what? 8 square root of x plus 4c, or you can say x8 square root of x plus d. That's what I used to do. I used to replace, again, my 4c with a d, but if you look in back of the book, Again, it's 8 square root of x plus a constant c, and this is your final answer here. Okay? So we're using that property there. Here. Right? What do you guys think? This is an indefinite integral. Easy breezy lemon squeezy? Right? I'm trying to look in our book. I'm trying to find section that is. I'm actually looking at a different book. 5-3. Um, yeah, they give you they give you that in 5-4, I guess. Okay, let's do some more here. x squared minus 5x plus 3dx, right? Indefinite integral format. So using properties, I think we gave you those properties already. 
using properties, this is x squared dx, right, minus the integral of what? 5x dx, the integral of 3 dx. Okay, so don't forget, I can pull out my what? Constant here, that 5. So using the sum and difference properties for integrals, And I can actually pull out this constant, too. This constant, right? And so you say, don't I get now what? 3dx. And so I have one integral to perform, the second integral to perform, and the third integral to perform. With all the constants pulled out. Okay, so now, ladies and gentlemen, what do you guys do with each one? You got three integrals. So this gives you now what? One-third x cubed, okay, minus five times, or I should say five x squared over two, plus three x, and then you just end it with a constant c. So if you actually said to me, the following, okay? You said, can I add this C1 here plus C2 plus C3 because I had three integrals and every, every time I integrate, aren't I supposed to add a constant? And I'll say, yeah, you can do that. These are now what? C1, C2, C3. What's your final answer? 1 third x cubed minus what? 5 halves x squared plus 3x plus all those constants leaves you with that big C because a constant is another way of just saying add that number. C1 plus C2 plus C2 is C3 and you're done. All right, you guys okay with that detail? In five, these, this is in section like five four. Notice, doesn't it require you to have knowledge of antiderivatives? The answer is yes. All right, how about something like this? This is the cube root. Cube root of, we're going to put 8 over x dx. Okay? So notice what we're going to have to do right up in here with this function here. we got to do some algebra here. I always put purple for algebra. So remember, you have the quotient rule. Okay. That's the quotient rule. And what's the cube root of 8? Do you guys know? This is actually 2. Is that right? So you're looking at 2 over the cube root of x dx. Is that right? You guys okay with that one? And again, what do you do with this constant? You pull the constant out. So you got 2. And then it's 1 over the cube root of x. Or you say it's 2 times 1 over x to the 1 third. This would be 2 times x to the minus 1 third dx. Pull out the 2. So you're going to have to do this what? Integration. Okay. 
Okay, you guys okay with that? Now, what is what is negative one third plus one? Is that negative one third plus three thirds, which gives you two thirds? Okay, so this would now be over two thirds. And you say, is that plus the C because we integrated here? Yes. Which give you two now, three halves, X to the two thirds plus C. And then you're gonna do what? Distribute, which gives you three X to the two thirds plus two C, or three X to the two thirds plus D. Doesn't matter what you say, but in back of the book, you say, I, I see 3 cube root of x squared plus c, because again, that's just a constant. d, 2c, that's a different c, but it doesn't matter. It's just, just a fancy way of saying constant here. Okay, you guys okay with that? So you might have to do a little bit of algebra before you what? Before you integrate. Indefinite integral, we don't evaluate any limits. Do you guys see some of that, those questions in the book by, by any chance? You go, oh my God, Mr. Judge, how do you handle that? Right? X. X squared plus 5. DX. Okay? Indefinite integrals. So you guys don't have a product rule. There is no product rule until calculus two. So you guys have to sign up for calculus two if you want to see a, a version of a product rule. They save it for a whole other course. So you say, well, what do they want me to do? Just some algebra, okay? Distribute. This gives us x cubed plus what? Five x, okay? So use some algebra here and now you get to use properties of integrals. Integral of a sum. Is sum of integrals. We gave you that property. And then you get to pull out the what? The constant of a five here, okay? So ladies and gentlemen, you got one integral to perform here. And now you have the second integral. Okay, you guys okay with that? So let's do the integrals here. This is going to be by power rule, 1 fourth x to the fourth plus c1 plus 5 times 1 half x squared plus c2. I'm going to give you every gory detail here. Distribute. One fourth x to the fourth plus c one plus say is that five halves x squared plus five c two. What do you guys notice about your constants? What do you do with that? You can say just plus big C. All right, you guys okay with that one? So sometimes you have to do a little bit of what first? A little bit of algebra first. Integral x minus 3 squared dx. Okay, what kind of algebra do you guys think you're going to have to do here? I want you to do some algebra here. What do you guys think? Anybody know? Glad we're going over these questions. What do you guys use? Foil. So... The algebra you have to use is x minus 3, x minus 3, which is x squared minus 3x minus 3x plus 9 or 
x squared minus 6x plus 9. This is the, the algebra. That's here. x squared minus 6x plus 9. Now you just need to use your properties of integrals, right? So what happens now? What do you say? You say, okay, integral of summer difference is summer difference of integrals. Yes, you can pull out the what? Constants. Let me give you every detail. Okay, and you say, well, what are the constants? You pull out that 6, you pull out the 9. So you have x squared dx minus 6 integral x dx plus 9 integral of what? dx. Okay, so you might say I have my first integral. I have the second integral to perform. Maybe I got to use a different color. Okay, we'll use pink. That integral. Did we give you that fact, by the way? Maybe we didn't give you the fact. You guys, and what's the integral of dx? What's that integral? Ah, uh, let's write it down. Isn't this 1, by the way? Just so you know, it's the integral of 1 times anything is itself, dx. Okay, you guys with me on that? Maybe you guys don't know that. Okay. What's 0 plus 1 by the power rule? Now you can integrate, right? And so what's 0 plus 1? Isn't that x to the 1 over 1 plus c? So this is why I, I wrote down prior. This is just simply x plus c. So what I'm saying is this is another formula for integration, I think that you guys want to really what you want to know because it shows up a lot. Okay, so so you might say, is this why I've been saying that this integral here was just what? Yeah, it's x plus c. Okay, I was using that fact. Maybe didn't give it to you guys. What do you guys think? Wow, indefinite integrals. But now I have to do all the others, right? So what is this one? Isn't that one-third x cubed? Do I have to put plus c1? Nope. What is this? This is x to the first. One-half x squared. You guys see what I'm saying? I don't have to put those c. I don't have to say c1, c2, c3, because at the very end, it just has a simple constant. So I could just leave it to the end. So what do we have here, right? We have what? One-third x cubed. This is that first antiderivative minus 6 times 1 half x squared plus 9x. We're going to end up with that c again at the end, just to kind of remark there. So your final answer is going to be this. 1 third x cubed minus 6 times 1 half, that's 3, plus 9x plus c. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you learned your antiderivatives because what's going on here, you see, you see them in spades, don't you? But you, now you had to do algebra first. So this is all based on your antiderivatives. <laughs> Okay. Okay, there's no quotient rule, by the way. Okay, so what do you think you have to do first? There's no quotient rule. We have some indifferences, right? There's no quotient rule. So what do you think this becomes? What do we do here? What algebra do we use? 
Say so use some what? Use algebra. What does that give you by the algebra? Isn't this vx to the fourth, 5x cubed minus 1, everything's over x squared. Don't you divide every term by x squared? Okay, and you get what? 3x squared plus 5x minus 1 over x squared. This is what the algebra did for us, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, you guys okay with that here? Now you say, well, what happens now? That's what we're supposed to integrate. We're supposed to integrate 3x squared plus 5x minus x squared dx. Okay, integrate this. Properties of integrals. Okay. Pull out your what? Pull out the constants. So three integral x squared dx plus five integral x dx minus the integral of x to the minus two dx. Okay. So you get again one integral, two integrals. Three integrals to perform here for the price of one. And you have those constants in front for each, for some of those. Okay, so it looks like we had to do some algebra first. That's the idea. Now, every integral, power rule, what's, what's the integral of x squared? One-third x cubed. I'm not going to put my constant. I don't need to. I'll put it at the end. What's the integral of x? One half x squared. Put your constant at the end and then minus, what's negative two plus one? Isn't that negative one? X to the negative one over one plus c. So notice what we did in every one of these cases. We used the what? Power rule. This power had, a, this is a one power there. Okay, you guys with me on that? You just need to see the colors, maybe. My first antiderivative, second antiderivative, and my last antiderivative. What happens now? Three times one third is gone. This is x cubed. Five halves x squared minus a minus makes that a what? Plus. And ladies and gentlemen, you are what? You're done. Look at that. And, you know, just for OCD purposes, haven't we been putting those final answers in black? Those of you guys who have OCD. Okay. There you guys go. So sometimes you have to do some algebra at first. Is that right? Guess what we have now? What if they said to you guys something like this? The integral of 3 minus secant squared x. Now they're going to introduce some what? Sub trig integrals. So by using properties, you have now what? The integral of 3 dx minus the integral of secant squared x dx. Right? And I can pull out the constant 3, so that's the integral of dx minus the integral of secant squared x, what? dx here. So first integral. Second integral, 
Okay, now I want you guys to recall at this point, because you use properties already here, you pulled out the what? You pulled out the constant three here. You should probably know these formulas like you know your what name. What's the integral of secant squared? Do you guys know? It's tangent. So this is the same as the antiderivatives here. Okay, so you got formulas. What's the integral of sine minus cosine? What's the integral of cosine, ladies and gentlemen? Sign. Don't forget to add the C. Okay. Um, what do we have next? You guys know? <coughs> What's the integral of secant tangent? Yep. It's just secant plus C. Absolutely. Okay. Um, let's see. We're probably missing. I know what we're missing. Integral of cosecant squared is minus what? Isn't it minus cosecant cotangent or minus cotangent squared? I apologize. Sorry, minus cotangent. Uh, and then the last one is cosecant cotangent, I believe, right? Anybody know what that is? Isn't that minus what, cosecant? So there's actually six trig formulas. And if you said, isn't this integral you gave me a formula? Okay. And then maybe just as a very simple formula here, power rule. So now that you guys have those formulas here, you want to know this like you know your what? like you know your name here, all of these formulas. Because if you know that, you can just simply say, my answer here is what? This is x. This is tangent. So your final answer is going to be what? 3x minus what? Tangent plus c. So now you can say, oh, this is 3x minus tangent plus c. And you integrated antiderivatives. So it's based on those formulas. Yes, you have the sum and difference property. You say, well, what, what two properties do we have? Actually, three properties. You guys remember what they are? The three properties. Constant times a function pull out the constant and integrate the function, then you have the sum of difference. Integral of a sum, you guys remember? Sum of integrals. Integral of a difference is what? Difference of integrals. This is just the properties now. Okay, three properties and I don't know how many, eight formulas, all in notation of indefinite integral notation, but you had all these properties before, they just in terms of antiderivative notation. Okay, is that true? Do you guys know what we're saying here? So we're looking at a ton of those examples here. Yeah, we got to be careful. Yeah, we got to be careful here. We have to say n can't be negative 1 here. In all honesty, you say n is not negative 1. Oh, it's n plus 1. Yes, you are correct. Thank you. 
you add one to the power always and divide by that same sum. It's true. And how many how many formulas? Let's write them down here. We can say this is like, you know, it's not the same num numeration as the book, but it's the same properties that they have listed there for you guys. You know, formulas. Should we have you guys try some on your own? I'm going to say into what? Integrate. To sine x minus 3 cosine x. Okay. Dx. Number 2. Sine 2x over sine x, number 3. Integral square root of x, 1 square root of x dx. One plus cosine squared over cosine squared dx number five. Sine plus sine tangent squared. over secant squared dx. Okay, so we're going to have to integrate and I'll give you guys some time just to at least start them but we want to finish them off together. Okay, at least start these here. See what you guys get. Okay?
Hey, remember, I want to at least get started in some of these here, ladies and gentlemen. Oops. All right, we use properties here, don't we? Do you guys know what I'm saying? This is going to be what? The integral of a difference. Pull out your constants now. Okay, so now you have what again here? You have what? One, two integrals. You got some constants there. So this is going to be two. What's the integral of sine? Negative cosine. Good. What's the integral of cosine? Sine, and we're going to add our constant at the end. So I'm just going to emphasize that this belongs to this first integral. Belongs to the second. So final answer. Negative 2. Cosine x minus 3. Sine x plus c. There you are. Okay, this is how we integrate number one. <laughs> okay, so those antiderivatives are vital. Right? You guys okay with that? And how about this next portion right here? How about this? Ah, keep one of these things. Okay. I'm going to ask you guys to think about this really quick as I close the door. So do you know what's sine 2x? This is, ladies and gentlemen, this is 2 sine x cosine x. And then that's over sine x. So in other words, yes, you're doing some, oh, let's go back and use the right colors here, right? Yes, you're using some algebra, kind of, but I'm going to say it's not even algebra. What is it really? This is, this is trig. It's a very famous trig identity, sine of a double angle, okay? Very famous. Sine of a double angle is to sine the single angle over cosine, but that was already over sine, okay? So you get cancellation now. So this particular integral now is going to become what? The integral of 2 cosine x dx, where you get to pull out your constant. So that's 2 integral cosine. And you already had that antiderivative formula for that. What, what is that going to be? This is going to be 2 times what? Derivative of sine is cosine. So the antiderivative is sine. Okay, and add your constant at the end. Final answer, 2 sine plus c. And there you go. Okay, you guys okay with that one? So that one involved some trig, you remembering that trig ratio, or that, not trig ratio, the trig identity. Okay, this one, remember, involves some what? Some algebra first. So you might say, what's the algebra? Uh, it's going to be FOIL. Right?
So first term is just x because it's the square root of x times square root of x. Is that right? Second term, or the O term, is going to be just 1. The outer term and inner term are the same. The last term is, is that 1 over x? <laughs> oh, I can't believe they did that to you. So x plus 2. Can't believe I did that to you, but I'm actually taking that from a book. And that's the algebra. The problem is, ladies and gentlemen, you got an issue here, okay? Let me share with you guys the issue. The algebra is fine. And then properties of integrals, you say, okay, integral of x dx, integral of 2 dx plus the integral of 1 over x dx, you say, I can do this. You can do most of it. Pull out your constant. Okay. Then I'm going to do this. I'm going to say, okay, I know you can integrate this. I know you can integrate this. Let me go back, though. You can integrate this. You have a formula. But this in red is... Done in calculus two. So the first two integrals, you say, oh, that's one half x squared, and then this is two x. You can't integrate the last one because you haven't taken calculus two yet. Okay, so you haven't taken calculus two. You can't do that last one. You're gonna have to stay what. Stay tuned. You got to pay more fees, take more courses to answer that question. <laughs> All right, so that's either good news or bad news. But I'm not sure. This book. Stay tuned. That's a calculus two question, not a calculus one. Remember this? Remember x can't be negative one or x? Remember, go back up here. Remember this rule here? For the power rule? Right? You can't have a negative one power, which is one over x. Can't have that. Okay, can't do that. That's a calculus two question, not a calculus one question. So you guys have to come back next semester. Don't do it in the winter. If you try it in the winter, you're gonna regret it, guaranteed. Why don't you guys take tennis for the winter or something? You guys know what I mean? Take something. If you try calculus two in the winter, you've been sold a bill of goods. Learning calculus two in five weeks? Nope, you can't even teach it in five weeks, let alone learn it in five weeks. So don't listen to people who tell you that. All right? You guys okay with that? Trust me on that one. That's like the last class I would ever take in five weeks. I wouldn't even do it. I wouldn't tell my daughter to do it. And if my daughter came to me and said, Dad, I'm going to take calculus two in five weeks, I'd say, no, you're not. You're going to take tennis. Yoga. What else could you take? <laughs> yeah, music, whatever. <laughs> Don't take calculus two in five weeks. Are you insane? That's like, you go, I'm sorry, Mr. Judge, you already registered for it. Drop it and register it for next semester. Calculus two in five weeks cannot be done. It's crazy. All right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's crazy. I don't know. One over, you got to distribute, ladies and gentlemen. There's no identity, by the way for one plus cosine squared. There is an identity for one minus cosine squared. And so the algebra you use here, did anybody ever tell you guys to do that? I hope not. What's the reciprocal of cosine? This is secant squared plus one. And so ladies and gentlemen, yes, Using properties of integrals, we got two integrals we can perform here. Okay? Imagine if you took calculus one in five weeks. Is that doable, you think? You did this course in five weeks? Think about it. And calculus two actually has more work, by the way. Not less work, it's more work. What's the formula for the integral of secant squared? Isn't that tangent? And then this is just what, x? Don't forget to add c. If 
Final answer. Tangent X plus X plus C. There you go. Easy breezy lemon squeezy. Uh, this one again has some algebra to do to use, right? What is this? Notice sec uh, sine is actually um, in both terms. I'm gonna factor out sine. Then I left with one plus tangent squared. And then that whole thing is over what? Secant squared. Okay using the algebra. Now, I'm gonna to have to use another identity. Do you guys know what one plus tangent squared is? What's one plus tangent squared? That's a Pythagorean identity, that's secant squared. And then that will be over what? Secant. What do you think happens with that secant squared? It cancels? So you just have the integral of what? Sine. Did I say you get to use that formula sheet? I think I have that trig formula cheat sheet. Did, right? Didn't I? Did you know guys, guys have you use that? I'm going to go back here. Uh, not here. I'm going to go back to math 241 and say you can have that trig sheet. Cheat sheet. Pythagorean identities are right in here. Okay. So we said one plus tangent squared. Tangent squared plus one is secant squared. Is that true? I go, yeah, okay. There you guys go. So this is just the integral of sine. What's the final answer? Negative cosine. Plus C. So ladies and gentlemen, what I went through today is the material in section five, I think part of it's in section five, four, maybe five, three. I look at the book, I think it's five, four, where they introduce to you some of these questions in terms of uh, the indefinite integral format, right? You guys know what I'm saying? I don't have the book in front of me, but you do have that format for indefinite integrals. So this is the title of what we're doing today. This is, I'm gonna have to go change this title And I don't know how many problems we did. I'm going to change the title. Oh, come on. Don't want to do that. Change the title. In definite what integrals and that's when you have no what no limits okay you need to use the anti-derivatives here so there we go ladies and gentlemen we're all set for tomorrow what's tomorrow u substitution ladies and gentlemen okay u sub so what do you guys think? Is this doable or is this impossible? Did you guys actually study antiderivatives? I hope. Remember I said, get them done when? Last week. If you did, you're going, okay, I could put this together. Not so bad. But if you didn't, you're going to be, oh my God. That's like trying to train for a marathon the night before you run the marathon. <laughs> you're going to be sore when you run the marathon. <laughs> you guys know what I mean? Hey, we'll see you guys tomorrow. You guys take care. Your homework's already in Canvas. Have a great day and stay safe.